If you're into homebrew space ring chapter lore, then here are a bunch of steps that you can follow to write your own backstory and make your space ring chapter your own. Now there's a lot of different things to consider, but I think the first two points are the most important. The first one is, where does your space ring chapter rank on the scales of corruption of mind, body and soul? Let me explain this with the four main space ring chapters, the blood angels, the space wolves, the dark angels, and the ultramarines. Now take the blood angels for example. They always are at risk of having a corrupted mind, of going insane. Uh, the black rage is a terrible thing for them, but it's a corruption of the mind. They don't really suffer from much corruption of the body. They grow fangs, they're, they're vampires in space, but it's not that bad. Now corruption of soul, they're very pure of soul. They're very loyal to the emperor. They're clearly fighting for the imperium and not for chaos. Now if you look at the space wolves, their corruption of mind is very minor. They have this thing that they want to be together with the pack, uh, which is kind of a mental thing. It's not a physical thing at least, but their corruption of body is quite strong. They mutate. Look at the wolf and look at how much they turn into wolves. After all, space wolves are werewolves in space, even though everybody likes the Viking aspect better than the werewolf aspect. And then corruption of soul. Well, they're loyal like a dog, so they're not corrupted in their souls. Then the dark angels, no corruption of mind, no corruption of body, but definitely corruption of their soul. They are probably the most disloyal, loyal space marine chapter there is. And then the ultramarines, they are not corrupted of mind, not corrupted of body, and not corrupted of soul. Now for your chapter, it's important that you figure out where you rank on these scales. Are you going for corruption of the mind, body, soul, all of it, a little bit, none of it? And if you decide this, you also need to figure out how your chapter deals with these corruptions. If you look at the blood angels, the corruption of the mind is seen as a bad thing. Like the black rage is a bad thing. These marines are kind of herded together and shoved to the front to go and die. On the other side, the space wolves don't see the wolven as a bad thing. This corruption is considered something pretty good. It's, it's beneficial corruption. Dark angels see the corruption of the soul as not good. Now, you can play around with this. A mental corruption doesn't have to be something bad. It can be something like uh, telepathic skills or uh, seeing the future. Clearly very beneficial and possibly something that your chapter favors, that your chapter loves to have more of. On the other end, corruption of body could be not turning into a wolf, but actual tentacles or other really nasty things that look too much like chaos. And maybe your chapter treats these corrupted marines the same way that the blood angels treat their death company. They herd them together and shove them to the front to go and die an honorable death for the emperor. This is a really great way to start your space marine lore. You can figure out what you like. You can figure out what it makes your guys special without it immediately showing on how they fight on the tabletop. Uh, this is a background that can permeate all of your chapter without affecting their actual play style. Uh, this is a really cool way to start off simple with your space marine lore. Now, if you're looking for suggestions, I would say go to the comments of this video. I ask everybody, come up with your coolest little bits and pieces. How corrupted can your space marine chapter be? And how do you see your guys changing? And this will also give you great ideas for conversions. If your guys are mutating, if they are fairly corrupted in body, you can come up with all kinds of cool mutations. You have the space wolves, of course, which are wolves in space, you can do space bears, you have the space sharks, you can do uh, gorillas in space, which which is actually, yeah, that's kind of like a regular space marine, I guess, but you can go for cats or birds or whatever you like and sort of create your mutations and kit bash and convert your marines to show all these cool mutations. Now, I think the second pillar that you need to follow after these scales of corruption is how do they fight on the tabletop? Your guys, is what you're playing with and they need to fit your playstyle as well. It doesn't make sense for you to come up with a melee focused army when you like a shooting army or come up with a heavy infantry swarm army like the Black Templars when you want to play vehicles like Black Templars. But coming up with this playstyle kind of goes together with the scales of corruption, right? If you're heavily mutated into animals that are supposed to be smart like crows, like birds, you might have a more ranged and a more psychic based uh, chapter, kind of like the Thousand Suns. If you are more a feral animal that wants to fight and get close up, you're more of a melee chapter. Maybe you're more of a stealthy animal. 
Uh, these are options you have and they can immediately influence the way you play on the tabletop as well. But playing on the tabletop, I think if you want to play and you don't just want lore, is a very important pillar as well. And this again gives you great ideas about what you can do with your kit bashes and conversions. Are your guys stealthy? Are they more into vehicles? Are they very close with the Mechanicum? Do they have lots of augmentations? This is a really important part to consider as well. And now when you have these two pillars, the scales of corruption and how they fight on the tabletop, it's time to start looking at some other steps. So next I would go for which chaos god could tempt your chapter to fall to chaos? I think this is an important one because the scales of corruption don't really dictate the chaos god that you could fall to. And your fighting style doesn't really dictate this either. But it is a very important part of being a space marine. Every space marine chapter is at risk of falling to chaos. And if it falls to chaos, does it fall to a specific god or does it stay chaos and divide it? Uh, you can do a little mental game with, let's do again, blood angels, uh, space wolves, dark angels, and ultramarines, and just think about what they could fall to. Blood angels, of course, could fall to corn. Corn is always good, but especially blood angels, they love blood, corn loves blood. It's a match made in heaven, in, well, in the warp. Space wolves, melee chapter, very savage. Again, corn is a good god to fall to. Dark Angels. Now, Dark Angels, I think, can fall to multiple different kinds of gods, but I think Zinch is the one they would fall to. They're, they're into this you know, inner circle, outer circle, keeping secrets, forbidden knowledge, some weird helpers here and there. Zinch would fit the, the Dark Angels really well. And then Ultramarines. Well, Ultramarines are often seen as a very bland army, and I think one of the issues is that People don't see what kind of gods they could fall to. They don't see this corruption because Ultramarines are pure of mind, body, and soul. But if Ultramarines would fall, I don't think they would fall to Korn. Although Korn is always there. He likes killing. Space Marines like killing. It's a good match. Nurgle, uh, not so much. Ultramarines aren't so dour and boring and sort of always depressed. Um, Zinch could definitely be possible. Ultramarines are some of the best psychers in all of 40k. But I think Ultramarines would fall to Slanesh. See, Slanesh is not just the god of tentacles and boobies. It's the god of excess. And one of the things that we saw during the fall of the Emperor's children is that they strive for perfection. And Ultramarines strive for perfection in everything they do. They strive to be super codex compliant, to always follow exactly all the rules, anything that Gilliman says. They constantly run all kinds of simulations to be the perfect Space Marine and to always be there. And I think this sort of strive for perfection, that's definitely a way to fall to Slanesh. And so for your own Space Marine chapter, think about this. Even if you guys are the most loyal Space Marines ever, it's a good idea to have in your back of your mind, like if things were going wrong, if they were tempted, which chaos god would they fall to? And this can help you again, come up with cool conversions and little additions that you can add to your space marines. If they would fall to Zinch, it kind of makes sense to give them a couple extra scrolls and books and things that signify magic or knowledge. If they could fall to Nurgle, it might be good to signify something more like health and, and stamina, either through apothecaries or making them more bulky, more heavily armored, uh, more into attrition warfare, more into siege warfare maybe. Or are your guys chaos undivided? If they fall, would they just turn their back on the Emperor and kind of become Corsairs, just do whatever they like? Or more like Iron Warriors who just don't want to submit to a god at all? This is something that you can write into your chapter and give your chapter a lot of flavor, even if you're staying loyal with everybody. Having a Chaos God in the back of the mind of every Space Marine is a good little flaw for your Space Marines. Next up, I would look into the relation to the wider Imperium. For example, how is their relation to the Imperial Guard? Do they value human lives or are they just there to be thrown into the meat grinder? Do they act more like salamanders, where they try to save citizens? Uh, how many uh, Imperial Guard lives are worth the life of a single Space Marine? And vice versa, would they sacrifice a single Space Marine to save a hundred Guard lives, or maybe two hundred or a thousand? Or would they just never sacrifice a Space Marine for any of mankind? Another one is, of course, the Adeptus Mechanicus. How is their connection with technology? Are they there to take as much technology as they can? Do they have the resources to construct vehicles, uh, all sorts of augmentations, heavy armor, special weapons? 
this is really cool for conversions as well. You guys, are they walking around with high-tech weaponry that is sanctioned by the Inquisition, for example? Do they like the Inquisition? Or do Inquisitors always disappear when they start looking into your chapter, kind of like what happens around Dark Angels? These are questions that can give your army a little bit of uh, grounding into the wider 40k universe. All these previous steps are more about the chapter itself, and now it's more about relations with the rest. Sisters of Battle, do they... Do they believe the emperor is a god or are they opposed to anybody claiming the emperor is divine? Uh, these are things that they're not really defining your chapter. They're not really uh, giving you a lot of backstory, but it gives you a lot of integration with the wider Imperium. And of course, it allows for things like sanctioned Xenos weaponry or maybe sanctioned Chaos weaponry. Uh, these are all things that you can again use in your conversions and your kit bashes. Next up, their big, hairy, audacious goal, also known as BHAG. It's, it's a term from D&D often, or uh, writing, often fantasy writing. You, you need to have a big, big goal, some overarching goal that justifies everything they do. Um, let's say, for example, your guys uh, believe that the Emperor needs to die properly, to then ascend to godhood and lead the Imperium to a brighter, newer future. Now, that's a massive goal. Like, how is your chapter ever going to achieve this? It's unlikely that they ever can. That's a really good goal to have because it means your chapter has a reason to fight all these battles. It also is, is a reason for your chapter to fight against other Imperial factions. And maybe they can someday achieve this, or maybe they'll never be able to achieve this. But having a goal like this, allows your marines to commit atrocities to further their goals. So if you're saving mankind, exterminating a system, a couple planets, doesn't really matter because you're saving all of mankind. Giving them big goals like that allows them to do things that they would otherwise never do. You're not going to exterminate a planet to save five guys, unless those five guys are crucial to whatever goal your chapter has. So giving them a goal, giving them a preferred enemy helps a lot in this as well. Maybe they're there to exterminate orcs. Perfect goal. Something you'll never achieve, but something your chapter can definitely fight for all the time. And it gives you a good sort of talk when you're playing against your friend who plays orcs. Or maybe they fight against Tyranids, or maybe Xenos in general, or maybe all of Chaos. Or maybe they are the chapter that tests all other chapters for disloyalty and are kind of a tool of the Inquisition. They're very closely tied to the Inquisition. And they look for traitors in all other Space Marine chapters. There's big goals, and they, these will really, really help, again, ground your chapter into the wider 40k lore. Not just the Imperium, like the previous step, but all of 40k. Now, next are a few small considerations, and I'll list them quickly. The pain scheme. Of course, very important too for your chapter lore. Are your guys flashy? Are they walking around in ornate armor, painted gold with all kinds of details or personal colors or insignias? Or are they more of a muted chapter, more stealthy, more black, or maybe camo patterns? Or is the paint scheme signal that they might be falling to a chaos god? Purples and golds could fall to Slanesh, but it could also mean a closer connection to the Emperor, maybe the Custodes. Or greens and muted colors could signify a chapter that is into sort of forest combat or jungle combat and wants to blend into the surroundings, but it might also mean that they are falling to Nurgle. So your paint scheme is really important for your homebrew chapter lore as well. Are they Codex compliant or not? This ties into how they fight, the second step that I mentioned, but it's something to consider as well. If you want to follow the Codex, that's all good. Do they deviate from the Codex a little bit or a lot, like Blood Angels and Space Wolves, or do they just go their own way? This is an important one to consider as well, and it's also a cause for a clash, like a, a cause for a little friction with other Space Marine chapters and maybe other parts of the Imperium as well. Another one, is the Emperor a god or not? This is an important part of all of 40k, and it's also an important part of every Space Marine chapter. Do they see their Primarch as a god? Do they see the Emperor as a god? Or do they see them as some overgrown mortals with special powers? An important part of everything in 40k. And also, again, something that decides their relations with, for example, the Ecclesiarchy or with the Sisters of Battle or Black Templars or other Spaceman chapters that do think the opposite of what your chapter thinks. 
another one. How do they see the custodes? Are the custodes the embodiment of the emperor and revered bodyguards, or are they there to murder marines? That's an important part of your space marines as well. You'll meet custodes on the tabletop all the time. So it's fun if you have some background story for your chapter about why they would be fighting custodes. Are they there to support the blood games, some fighting exercise? Or is there good reason for the custodes to come at them and try to purge your Space Marine chapter and your chapter won't just stand idly by and let this happen. Fun way to also fight against your friends if they play custodes and bring a little bit more story to the tabletop. So to summarize, the purity scales and the way you fight I think are the two most important parts of any Space Marine chapter. It's the one thing that defines your chapter both on the tabletop and in the lore. Figuring out how your guys mutate and how your chapter deals with mutations. Are these mutations considered beneficial or are they considered actual corruption? Are your guys shoved to the front or taken out back and shot or are you guys revered if they start to mutate? How do I fight on the tabletop, of course, is mostly personal preference on how you like to play the game. Do you want vehicles? Do you want flexibility like Ultramarines? Or do you want melee or do you want range? All of this decides a lot of your Space Marine chapter lore. Then the relation with the wider Imperium, how they could fall to Chaos and which Chaos God they would fall to, and their big, hairy, audacious goal. Those are the five things I would mainly consider when I write Space Marine homebrew lore. The other parts, little details, can give a lot of flavor to your tabletop battles when you play against your friends, but they're not that necessary for Space Marine lore. If you have good ideas, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. I love reading people's Space Marine lore, even if it's just like two sentences, like, oh, my guys, they got founded to do this thing, and they turn into those animals when they fight, and send links or photos on Instagram or whatever of your conversions. I love to see this stuff, and I'm sure other people in the comments will appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe for more content like this, and maybe check out this video next.